Hello and welcome to dot points P11 and P10. And so today we're looking at um, describing ways that plants compete with each other and also investigating how we manage that competition to um, have productive plants. And the ways, there's two ways, um, plant density and weed control. So we're looking at how plants compete and how we manage it with plant density and weed control. Okay, so firstly, um, ways that plants compete with each other. So of course, plants um, grow in fairly pro close proximity to each other, either the same or different species. And we call, um, when we're growing lots of plants together of the same variety, we call that a crop. And when there's plants growing together of different species, that's called a pasture, because normally a pasture is for animal consumption and a crop is um, something we're probably gonna harvest for human consumption most likely. So there's a number of ways here that um, plants can compete with each other. And we're gonna look at four of these in more detail in a second, but um, they are competition for resources, such as water, light, nutrients, plants releasing chemicals um, to kill off other competition, and that's known as allelopathy, um, acting as an alternative host to a pest and disease, modifying microclimate, example shading, making harvesting difficult, example weeds, reducing yields or quality of produce, and lastly, increasing control methods or costs with sprays. Etc. So we're going to look at four of those in a bit more detail. So the first one is um, competing for resources. So uh, we're talking about um, nutrients, water, space, and sunlight and carbon dioxide. So these are all things that plants compete with each other for, which we kind of looked at in the P9, P14 dot points. And um, this occurs between crop plants and weeds. So for example, if we're trying to grow um, wheat, then um, those wheat plants are actually all competing against each other for these things, but then they're also competing against the weeds. Um, and we'll look shortly about how we can control these things. The next one is um, plants releasing chemicals, and this is called allelopathy, um, and it's toxic chemicals that plants uh, release and it affects the growth of neighboring plants. And so the suppression of growth by chemicals um, released by another plant is known as allelopathy. An example here is pine plants um, having nothing growing around the base. So you might have noticed um, if you've ever seen pine plants growing, um, there's often grass around the base, but there's a circle around the um, actual base of the tree where the grass just won't grow and it's usually in a perfect circle um, because the, the pine plant is putting out chemicals um, to control or to, to, to compete against these other plants and, and outcompete them, and which it does quite well. And that's known as allelopathy. Acting as an alternative host to pest disease. Um, so an example, weed plants growing near a vegetable crop can be infected with a virus and infested with aphids, um, and then the aphids can then transfer the viral infection to neighboring crop. So that's um, a bit of competition between plants. And then lastly, modifying the microclimate. Um, weeds are particularly good at this, um, which is what makes them good weeds. They um, have a difference in the way they grow or their growth habit and their morphology, which is, means their shape, and it results in the microclimate being changed. Um, this example here is Patterson's curse weed, which begins growing by spreading its leaves out in a rosette or a, um, a round kind of horizontal, um, a, ro a round pattern um, along the surface of the ground and thus creates shade all around it and stops other um, plants, even the crop maybe, from actually getting um, access to sunlight, which is going to mean that it is very successful at competing um, against the thing that you're trying to grow. So um, that's how plants modify the microclimate and prevent or compete with other things around it. Um, once looking at this video in class um, on Parthenium weed, um, we, f we looked at it and um, we found that Parthenium is a fast growing woody stemmed weed and woody stem weeds are hard to control because they have a tough stem and animals don't like eating it. Um, so they end up surviving while the animals eat the, uh, the good crop or the good pasture that you actually want to keep and the weed, um, the weed stays and the, um, the parthenium stays and the, the pasture is gone. Um, so these characteristics mean it can grow quickly and outcompete crops or pasture in paddock. Um, it means that it's hard to control in large open areas. Chemicals are often expensive and sometimes ineffective if they're um, resistant to it. Um, chemical control can be used, however, there's a number of biological controls as well, including a stem boring weevil, um, which eats the stem out of the plant and causes it to die. Um, and this is good as the plant cannot become resistant to this. Um, if you have a look here, now we're moving into the P11 dot point and we're talking about managing plant competition. So we've already looked at ways that plants compete with each other and now we're looking at um, ways that we can manage that competition. And the two ways that are listed in the dot point are number one, plant density and number two, weed control with integrated weed management. And so first of all, we did our wheat um, density experiment 
And basically, um, we found in the experiment that um, if you planted, uh, say, wheat, for example, um, at a very low density, then weeds were very um, able to grow and there were a lot of weeds and it was, there was um, you know, a lot of weeds able to grow in a lot of competition there. Um, if you plant the crop at a very high density, then um, you don't get very many weeds, but the plant um, ends up uh, not getting to full maturity because it's competing with itself. So you want to find an ideal density, but if you plant at a higher density rather than a lower density, it helps control weeds. So if you research planting, planting density and weed control, um, you'll find something like this. So plant density describes how closely plants are planted to each other. A lower plant density means more chance for weeds to grow in a crop, ultimately leading to negative competition and lower yield. A higher crop density leads to uh, less weeds able to compete. However, the crop plants um, will compete more heavily with each other and optimum density will prevent weed growth, but will also allow crop plants to reach reproductive maturity. Number two here, um, integrated weed management, which is very similar to integrated pest management. And so um, basically it's using multiple methods to control the weeds, um, chemical, physical, biological, etc. And so it says by using several techniques um, to reduce the chance of weed species will adapt to the control techniques, um, which is um, important. Um, for example, if a herbicide is used over a long period of time, um, a species can build up resistance. So a long-term integrated weed management plan that considers all management techniques available um, should be used um, and any integrated weed management plan should focus on the economic on the most economical and effective controls that include considerations for the environment or ecological considerations and the long-term approach to integrated weed management should reduce the extent of the weeds and reduce the weed seed stock remaining in the soil um, it should consider how to achieve the goal without degrading the desirable qualities of the land such as native ecology or agricultural crops okay so we um researched a bit on this um, on the Barker Ag website and uh, there's five ways that you can control weeds um, and here we have uh, biological, cultural, physical, chemical and of course if you use multiple ones of those together then it's called integrated weed management. So example of biological control, um, we looked at prickly pear video which is on the Barker Ag website. Um, prickly pear is something that was introduced into Australia uh, probably almost 100 years ago, uh, a long time ago, and um, it's become quite a weed. It's, um, if you look it up and look at what it looks like, it's quite a tough plant uh, with a hard exterior. Um, it is almost like a cactus kind of type plant. Um, so it really doesn't have many predators or any predators in Australia. It was introduced from South America. Um, so a biological control is the Cactoblastis moth, which was also introduced from South America, and it um, eats away at the prickly pear and causes it to die, but it's also very slow. Um, cultural control, you could use rotational grazing, um, fast growing crops that outcompete weeds. Um, physical control, you could remove plow or slash weeds. Chemical control, you can use herbicides such as Roundup and of course integrated weed management involves using all of them. Number two, why um, identify why early detection and eradication are important um, to enable eradication if um, a weed is found, um, to prevent a weed from becoming unmanageable um, such as um, you know, if you go into the bush, go for a walk, um, you'll see plenty of weeds that have just um, taken over and become out of control and um, we can't control them if we leave them too long. So it's, uh, it's better to um, detect them early and try and eradicate them early uh, before it becomes too hard and too expensive. Here we just have some examples, um, some more examples, physical control, you could um, tillage or plowing, physical exposure of the seeds in general prevents germination, you could burn and reduce germination flowering, you could slash. Um, chemical control, you could use a, bro a broad spectrum herbicide, which kills all plants, um, both um, monocots and dicots, and an example is Roundup, um, or you could use a narrow spectrum um, targeted uh, herbicide, which for example might just kill broadleaf weeds and not your wheat crop for example, and that was an example of a chemical that only kills dicots and not monocots, it would be a broadleaf weed killer. A biological control, we talked about cactoblastis, um, it could be slow, um, but you don't get resistance and it can be detrimental example cane toad if it's not done right and lastly cultural control is basically things that you do um, so you can monitor the weeds um, over season and manage their life cycle um, have grazing management to ensure there's enough competition between pasture to decrease weed growth and you could use high quality seeds which grow faster and mean that um, it the actual um, crop that you're trying to grow out competes the uh, weeds that might be around in terms of past HSE questions, uh, first of all, it says identify sources. So it needs to have two. You need to um, circle or highlight things like that. 
um, where it says sources, it doesn't say one, it's a two mark question, it's identifier, which means you need two. Um, so the first one is competition for resources such as light and nutrients and allelopathy producing chemicals to kill, kill competitors. Now, I've gone above and beyond here, but um, I've kind of guaranteed my marks there um, by doing it thoroughly. Um, the next one is explain how a management a management strategy reduces competition in crops. Now it's important here that you just do one and not two because it says a management strategy. If you do two, quite simply, you won't have enough detail probably in this space to get the three marks and it's an explain. So um, we need to think of a management strategy that will reduce competition in crops. And we could talk about density here or we could talk about integrated weed management and I've chosen density. So I said planting crops in an optimal recommended density means they'll be adequately able to grow. And this means they can grow as fast as possible and outcompete weeds. It also means that crop plants will not have as much competition between other plants in the crop. So they'll be able to reach uh, physiological maturity and hence produce reproductive growth. And remember, um, most crops that we grow, we want to get reproductive growth. So like for example, wheat, uh, we actually harvest the grain, which is the reproductive growth. And so we need to make sure that plants can be able to get to um, their reproductive phase. And we'll look at that um, in the next dot point P12. So um, which of these management techniques um, using crop production is not associated with management, uh, managing competition? Um, and the answer to that is insecticides or B because um, the um, insects are not related to um, plants competing with each other. Herbicides will be related, irrigation is related and row spacing is also related for density, but insecticides B here is um, the correct answer. Here we have um, questions from 2013, explain how crop yield is affected by plant competition. So um, four marks, explain, and um, here's the answer. So plants compete with each other when growing. Um, if the crop density is low, plants will compete with weeds. Um, if crop density is high, plants will compete with each other. If you're seeking vegetative yield, leaves, example lettuce, then an optimum density is reached above which the yield flatlines. Each plant has lower yield with more plants giving the same yield. With reproductive yield, uh, such as grain, example wheat, um, increased density and competition when going above optimum density means many plants will not reach reproductive maturity and hence will produce less yield. Managing competition allows maximum yield to be gained. Um, and that is a good response for full marks there. Um, the next one, uh, describe strategies a farmer can use. And this is important, strategies. You can't do one here. Uh, you will not get full marks for one. Um, a farmer could implement to reduce the effects of plant competition. And so we know already that the density and weed control were the two strategies. So we need to talk about both. Two main strategies can be used to um, reduce effect of plant competition density and weed control. Plants should be planted in optimum density. This has been worked out to maximize productivity and yield whilst minimizing ability of weeds to grow. Um, on the other hand, integrated um, weed management, IWM, involves using physical, pulling out weeds, chemical, herbicide, biological, example, stem, stem weevil in parthenium, and cultural, using fast growing seeds to help control weeds of a crop and therefore reduce competition with that crop and increase yields.